Okay. Uh, yes, so uh, I'm Bruce, and today I want to talk about uh, how to write better unit tests with RSpec, and especially why you should stop using before and let. So uh, this idea might be strange to some of you. All you need to know now is that you can certainly write good test, good test case without using before and let. And the first question you might, want, you might want to ask is that, how do you dry your test code without using before and let? Right? Dry is important, right? So first of all, yes, dry is important. But in test case, you should favor damp over dry in most of the case. And, and the reason is that sometimes too dry, uh, you remove the duplication and abstract to, um, to, uh, to an over abstract, then it's harder to read because it's not, uh, it's not straightforward anymore. And it, which is particularly bad for test case because test, test case itself should be a document for your application as well. That being said, you can certainly uh, extract out some uh, common code snip uh, and reuse it. And by one of the techniques that you're already familiar with, which is, uh, OK, so for example, we have uh, this example. And all the preparation, all the setup is within the, is within the example, which is the eat block. And how do you uh, extract out without using before and let? So first, you move this to code snip down to a method. And then you call in it from your eat block. And by this, you can, you can extract out some common code you want to re reuse. That's all. It's so simple, right? <laughs> so simple. OK. So actually, by, at this point, you already know how to uh, simplify your code and uh, reuse your test code without using before and that. So, so uh, we are now, you get an idea. We are happy. And everyone is happy, right? No. And because the reason is that the hardest part is actually not learning the technique. The hardest part is actually how do you convince other people? Because if you don't have a good reason, why would people use something that they are not familiar with, which is easy for them because they are familiar with it? So, so that brings to the next question, which is what's wrong with before and let? So uh, let me give you an example. So that, uh, let's say that, no. Oh. Oh, yeah, let's say um, you're assigned to a new project. Uh, I mean, you're assigned to a project which you've never been part before. And you are helping them to overcome the problem of how to maintain code. And, this, uh, and your first ticket is to find, uh, investigate a bug which is uh, somehow a teenager is able to watch a R21 movie. So you look into it, and you realize, OK, there's actually one test case to capture this scenario. So you look into it, and you say, OK, what's wrong with this test case and this code? So first thing you want to know, who is the user? So you scroll all the way up to the file. And you found, OK, so we let user is Uncle Lin. It's, he is old enough to watch R21 movie, right? So the user is Uncle Lin, right? No. Because somehow it overwritten by an inner context. And now it becomes drunk. So all right. So it's drunk, right? And he's, he's 20. No. So. Again, it can be the, the age, the name can be over, overwritten or can be modified within let or before. And uh, of course, you, you, you might say, uh, this is not the proper way to use aspect. But that's because, uh, as I just mentioned just now, that you are joining a project that you've never been in before. You are helping them. And that's how it is. 
and this actually happened quite frequently. That's okay, uh, yeah, and then um, this goes and on and on and on. You spend ten or half hours just to answer one simple question: Who is the user? So this can be bad. And then uh, this is another part. So, so uh, as I showed just now, we know that sometimes it can be hard to read. It can also be hard to change. So, for example, uh, we have this. Uh, for this case, case we need to set up a lot of things. And what if I want to add something, add a new small behavior that you also apply for the cashback, for the membership redeem, uh, the the yeah the 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 other coupon, the other type of coupon. So add a test case as well. But now the old test case fail. And it is can be uh, imagine that you have this kind of structure all over the place, over ten one thousand lines in one file, and it's all been like this. And yeah, so it can be also very hard to change. And this is a simple scenario only. Yeah. So uh, and yeah, and then yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, where am I? Uh, yeah. So now, and you might uh, now you might thinking that okay, I know there are some potential pitfalls, so I can avoid it, or or that uh, as long as you work, it, it, it's okay, right? You can you can handle it. But why it matters? Because Yes, there are proper ways to use aspect before and let, but but if you have tight deadlines and you don't have a lot of like top engineers or like uh, aspect book writers or aspect committers, you eventually encounter all these problems. Trust me, because. When you when you want to like re rearrange all the context that make it reasonable, but you don't have time, your boss is shout at you and ask this feature to come out by end of today. What are you gonna do? You just insert one more context or or just copy over and change a few words to make it work, to make it pass the test case, but it make the structure even worse, and which is why. We have a uh, hard to recall at the first place, and secondly, because test case test is the safety net for refactoring, and if your test case is bad, and it's technical debt by itself, then you are working a tight rope without the safety net, which is very bad, and most importantly, that you are working on this kind of project is a death march, which is you are not happy. Your teammates are not happy, and your manager are not happy because asking for one line of change costs you one afternoon to fix all the test case. And you know everything will come to an end when you reach a certain point. You cannot take it anymore, and there were like very serious thing happen. So it's not a very good good situation to to work with, and especially. Um, because technical debt is not a technical problem. It's, a, uh, it's about people. It's not about tech. It's about people because people are not happy with it. For machine, it's, as long as it works, it works, right? So it's about people. And speaking of this, there's a very good article uh, explaining like, uh, uh, how do you control your technical debt by TDD. So it's a very good read. Uh, I highly recommend uh, to check it out when you, when you uh, get home. So, so, but it doesn't end here. There are still a lot of technique, a lot of knowledge you need to know to write a good test. So uh, here are some uh, tips that I think is very helpful, personally. Um, uh, so first one is, okay, uh, one test, one topic which is you should only test one thing for one example. In this case, we, have, we are testing 
he should only allow to watch a twenty-five movie if he is adult. But in this test case, we are conveniently also testing about the name uh, behavior about the name, which is doesn't doesn't belongs to the concern of this test case. So what we should do is to remove this and make it a test case an uh, example by itself. And the other problem is um, the other uh, principle is that you should only given the exact important detail to test. In this example, uh, we are testing the behavior of first name. It should return the first part of the full name, which should be the drum. But in this test case, in this setup, you can, you, you can realize that the age and active, it doesn't really matter to this behavior. So we don't need that. And another thing is that if you notice, there's a let. Um, so uh, this let, although we don't need the movie at all, but it will actually still wrong. And because it's a let band, so it was still wrong. And which is bad because not only did this confuse you, like why, why my test case care about movie? It doesn't, it doesn't really care, right? But it involved in your test case. So it, not only did it confuse you, it also slow you down, slow your test case down. Because it runs every time, even if you don't need that. That's, so that's the other problem with that. And then it goes the other way. Uh, just now it was too, uh, too much information. Now it can be too few information. For example, uh, you build a user, and the first name is John. Why? So uh, I think most of us use uh, either factory girl or fabrication. They are cinema in math to allow you to set up some default value. And if your default value happens to be John Lin, for example, this case, case will pass, which is strange because why? Where the name come from, right? So uh, we should add the important test, uh, important, important information to the test. So this is final result. No more and no less. Just exact important detail to test. And then uh, also uh, I will recommend to flatten the context. Sometimes your people are very tempting to uh, group your logical branch within the context, which is good, but in some case, it will make it harder to read. Uh, as I mentioned the, the example just now, that uh, in every context, you try to override something uh, in the upper context so that you can test the behavior you want. And it, it makes the test case very hard to read because you like spend 10 minutes to figure out who the user is. So. Yeah, you want to flatten it, and for the branch, uh, the different logical branch, you can add a when or if right in the uh, description to differentiate the uh, where is the this, who what is the this test case testing at, and then uh, for first test. So uh, this one, the the principle here is that uh, most of most of the time that your test case will contain four different things. One is you want to set up, you want to prepare the scenario that you are testing, then you exercise, call in the method or call the, call the, uh, the main method you are testing at or call the attribute, and you verify the return or the change. And lastly, uh, sometimes you will need to clean up something so that it won't affect the, the following test case. And you will want to separate these four phase with new lines, so that it's easy to easy to uh, uh, see which part is, is, is what. And then, I also I will recommend you to uh, enable the documentation format, so that when you run the aspect, it will generate a nicely formatted uh, uh, result. And also notice that let, let me let's go back to to the previous one. So you see, um, the context and the it, they are actually template for it. So your first level of context should be the one, the method you are testing at. Or if it's controller, 
then it's uh, the endpoint which is post something or get something. And every it block, the description should start with a verb. And it should be third person present tense. So it's uh, it does something or, or it does not, it returns, something like that. So, so that you can have uh, this um, like sort of like document or report. This can, uh, this can be easy, easily understand even for non-technical background people. So, okay, so you call first name and it returns this. You call watch, it's either raise a session if certain scenario or something does not raise a session if certain scenario. So that it's easy to understand. So, um, but this, all this technique uh, will, will help you change the way you write test case and, instant, and immediately help you to write better, uh, better man, uh, easier to maintenance code. Um, but how do you know this is, this is working? Right? How do you know this works? There is no silver bullet, but we do have a reliable matrix, which is what the fuck for the minutes, <laughs> right? Because yeah, right. So it's very straightforward uh, matrix, and so it's like okay, this uh, some jokes from network from internet. Does anyone ever do this? Yes, I did. So uh, th th was, this was me uh, one and a half year ago. And I was joining a, a project that I never take part, in uh, take, take part before. And um, <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's how it was. And in case you didn't notice, 35 was within one hour. So you can imagine how bad it was. So, yeah, that's how how you uh, how you know if low, this technique works. Conclusion. So, before we go into conclusion, I have very important things to mention. I have to mention it, which is <laughs> yes. So. Uh, we are hiring Unspeed. Unspeed uh, <laughs> is a um, uh, delivery central company, and we deliver a lot of things. For example, we can deliver grocery and food to your house, to your home, and we can do laundry for you as well. So there are a lot, a lot of new services are coming out as well. There are uh, a lot of development going on. So we need people. So do talk to me if you are interested in, in, interested in joining us. And the benefit that joining right now is that you can work with the code base that is uh, qualified for per minutes lower than 10 per day, <laughs> which is nice. Yes. <laughs> OK. And then uh, next I want to share that um, my gen, uh, this gen, uh, can give you some uh, nice formatted, uh, and also it gives you the uh, environment name right in your prompt, so that you know you won't do something stupid in production. And uh, also nice format, and uh, you can even have a table, so that you can easily share within Slack. And you can get all this within just two steps. So. Uh, remember, go check it out. And um, also, uh, this is another another open source project that if you are sick of the all the rubbish in your download folder, you can clean it up without without doing the like the daily cleaning up by yourself. So you can uh, get this um, this script. You can install it within just one command, and it will auto automatically clean your download folder for you every day. And the best part is that it works even if your computer is asleep during the time, because you will do it after you wake your computer. 
We, yes. So uh, check it out. It's also open source. And lastly, I'm uh, writing a new book about uh, uh, best practice of Ruby and, uh, and, and Rails. So if you are looking for a book that, that tells you not on, uh, I mean, if you are looking for a book that is not teaching you how to use the basic syntax, rather it's te tell you um, what are the best practice and why it matters, how it works. Like I explained to you uh, what's the problem with before and that. So please give it a try. And uh, uh, you can register your email. Please leave your email. And I promise there will be coupons once it's released. So please leave your email if you're interested. OK, so back to conclusion. So <laughs> this technique is simple. And, it's, uh, and with this technique, it's easy to read. You can write easy to read test code. And it's easy to change. And, and it also, it works everywhere. And by works everywhere, I mean you can copy this over to a new, another project without worry about if we will break because missing of one gen. And, and it will also work with debugger. You can step in the, the test case, uh, step in to the method. And also, it will also work with your existing go to definition tools of your editor because, after all, it's just a Ruby method. It's nothing special. Also, um, writing test case without using before and let, good test case without using before and let is possible. And most importantly, <laughs> reducing the what the fuck counter from dozens to a few is also possible. So let's write better test and be happier. Thank you. So uh, in case you miss it, there are some links here. <laughs> I will be first, but then you can follow, don't be shy. Uh, so you mentioned that on the first level of unit test, you test by method name. In controller test, the first level is the, uh, the name of the endpoint. What about the integration test or the feature test? What do you do uh, yeah, so unfortunately, I didn't spend much time on that. Okay. Yes. but. Uh, But in the integration test, I think that, OK, so, so uh, if you have a QA team in your company, uh, what usually will happen is that they will set up their own, uh, their own integration test for you in, in maybe in uh, Selenium or Chrome Hellis. So uh, to us, to me, uh, it's, I focus more on the unit test. That's also why uh, my, my uh, topic is, is, was actually uh, how to write better unit tests with uh, aspect. Yes, so yeah. OK, right up. <laughs> yes? What's, <clears throat> what real benefit? OK, <clears throat> I, I understand the point of uh, wanting to get rid of, I, I, I understand the argument for getting rid of Latin before. You want to reduce abstraction that isn't immediately obvious to the maintainer. But <clears throat> the one thing that let in particular gives you is memoization. If I have <clears throat> if, if, if I have a variable that's defined using ordinary let, not let bang, ordinary let, then that's defined when I need it and it uses the same definition each time I need it. Yeah? OK. Is, isn't it more productive to say let bang is a smell that we're going to work hard to, oh, that we're going to work hard to eliminate at the earliest possible opportunity? 
because what you're really saying there is there is some state with, with Let Bang says there is some state that has to be set for all tests, even the tests that aren't obviously using it. And if it's not obviously using the state, then what's the point? Okay, so, uh, so Let Bang do has its own scenario, and sometimes we have to use it, right? And the second thing is that. In some scenario, is this this is uh, actually happens that you're using let which is which is la lazy loaded, so it won't it won't uh, run unless you are calling it, and your test case don't really calling it. Yes, but your before in two contexts away is actually using it, and you are not care about this one in your test case, so it's still eventually. Be loaded, and actually this loaded uh, is not very bad. The worst part is that it confuses you, because you need to go and find all the users, you and you uh, uh, select that user, and you find all the user from this same test case, and and you found thirty of them. Which one is real? Yeah. Right. That's that's the bad that's the uh, bad part. Yes. Okay, and yeah. It's really good. Okay, there are no questions. Thank you once again, Bruce. Thank you.